Hi, everybody. I'm Mel Dor, the Aloha Shirt Psychic, and um, Kevin Chandler's on uh, vacation. Um, I was going to have Kim on my show last night, but I had an episode of Vertigo, go figure, and uh, we decided to do it tonight. Um, and so I've got Kim Copeland in the house. Yay! Yay! Woohoo! I'm so glad to be here with you, Mel. Thank oh, you. Yeah. We're, um, what are we talking about? Well, we're going to talk about take a lemon and make lemonade, positive intuitive energy, and how we can reprogram. Sometimes I think I fell out of the lemon tree. <laughs> <laughs> well, I noticed you have some nice yellow, yellowy color on, and I do too. And that's sort of accident for me, but here we are. And also, yeah. this is Oral Cancer Awareness Month, and this is... Um, this ribbon is the ribbon for oral cancer. It's maroon on one side and kind of a, a beige on the other. And um, I did this last night and I'm doing it tonight. Jeffrey Stein, who's one of our followers, uh, was diagnosed with uh, squamous cell carcinoma. That's the type of cancer on the tongue. And he's going to go in for surgery. And everybody, please send Jeffrey healing energy and oh. healing vibes. Um, so, you know, if anybody's going to comment below, please put in the comments to send Jeffrey healing. So beautiful. Thank you for saying that. So we send you healing, Jeffrey. Oh, I just see so many bluebirds. As I said that, even I see the bluebirds just in the room with him as he's having the surgery. So, I mean, gorgeous. And actually, I see a lot of ribbons and the bluebirds. It's going to, I think the surgery is going to be fine. I do too. Um, luckily they don't think it's spread the lymph nodes, but you know, they always have to remove lymph nodes that would have to, but they do to make sure that there's no metastases, metastases being spreading. So okay. I'm feeling he's going to pull through this with flying colors, but yes. you know, it's frightening to go through. Frightening. Yeah. And this could be an example actually of how to, how someone can turn lemons into lemonade. He's keeping, I talked to him the other day. He talked to Linda Grenda, Grendel as well. And I've been texting him just, you know, because I've been through it. And, um, you know, he's got a really positive attitude. And that's huge. That's huge. Mm -hmm. You know, you do get fearful. And that fear can paralyze you. And it's what I always say when I had cancer. I said, how am I going to get through this? And my guides came and told me, don't let the fear stand in front of you and hold you back. Let it get behind you and push you forward. I love that. I do. I love that. That's such a wonderful um, message. Let the fear push you forward. That's one of the ways we can take the lemon, make lemonade when we're fearful. I mean, I think, you know, our people and dogs and animals and the universe, you know, I think we're surrounded by this force. Peter Herkel has called it the Odic force. And it's like this force that surrounds all of us. And, you know, our mood puts ripples in that force and yes. people will pick up on it. And sometimes yes. it's hard to be positive. I mean, I get on, I get on a Dougie Downer myself sometimes. But then, you know, I have to pull my pants down and look at the ring around my butt from sitting on the pity pot. <laughs> <laughs> then, you know, then I'm good to go. You know, <laughs> <laughs> One of, I smack myself, right? One of the ways is humor, you know, to get us through things. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's hard to laugh. But anyway, that Odic Forest, I think other people hook into that. And so if we're on a ducky down, they're going to pick it up. Oh, yeah. So one of the things we can do is change, you know, um, change our uh, emotional state of being uh, to try to, you know, mm -hmm. take the lemon and make lemonade. Yes, yes. And, 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 and then other people pick up on that as well. That's right. It is everything is catchy, whether we realize it or not. Our energy field, even if our brain is scrambled right and left and left and right, or maybe nothing's connecting, then if you're reading to somebody, there is studies that for this. When you read to somebody, if your brain is scrambled, everybody else becomes scrambled too. Right. It, it happens. And so, yes, what we feel and not, and I believe, and actually I was just meditating with the angels a little while ago. And it was one of the things that Gabriella said is that our resonance where we are is we will resonate with other people around the world, even though we, people we don't know. 
we vibrate at that same frequency and then there's a whole resonance there um, as if we were one. And then people who resonate at one level or one area, I don't want to say level, but a certain, let's say put, if we put a number on it or A, B or C or red, yellow, blue, and then all the blues are going to come together, all the reds and, all, and then, the, but the more that we have in that positive, let's say positive is lemon color. Let's say it's a yellow, sunny, lemony color, and we can resonate at that yellow, sunny color. Well, all those that resonate the yellow, sunny, then others are going to join in and join in and join in. And this is how we change the world. Right. You know, people get afraid of what's going to happen in the country and this and that. And I understand that. I get a little fear for myself. But then I think, okay, let's all get out and vote. Let's all do something nice for somebody. Let's you know, doing something nice for somebody for no other reason that you don't do it because you want something in return. You just yeah. do it because it's the thing to do. And I think that's how that helps to rewire or or to change uh, those ripples in the odic force. And people pick up on that too. Oh, yes. That's one. That's wonderful. And you know, what? I want to say when people, let's say what, they've been diagnosed with a disease and maybe even a terminal disease, like I have seen a lot in hospice, you know, at first it may be devastating. You have to go through the grief process, you know, that denial, um, anger. Um, anger, shock, and then finally there's acceptance. So, but maybe through the, that process, then they can say, well, you know what, there is a pot, there, there will be light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, you know, and, and the true light. And remember too, all this is an illusion. Right. If we can remember that. We can remember that. But I think, you know, the ripples in the odic force, you know, they can become positive and people will pick up on it. Um, yes, yes. We can't change what other people think or do. But what we can do is change ourselves. Yes. And that power of thought is so important. The power of the heart as well as the mind. And the heart is actually a bigger vibration field than the mind i forget what it is but it's a lot bigger right and what and, is to rewire to do something nice very simple yes yes but it's also the power you can also go either way right you can go to the negative like if you have a negative thought you're sending that out as well so it is a choice just like you say it's a choice even though i mean i do know right now many of my friends having a hard time and of course, if we are engaged in the world, it's all around the world as well. So I, when you have the good times, be thankful because, you know, you never know what the next day is going to be. And then when you're having a good day, you can help those who are needing a little helping hand in your community. And that's a perfect time to do that. And then bring everybody else up with you because nobody is forgotten in this. Nobody. We're all in this together. A perfect um, example of doing something nice, for example, it doesn't have to cost you money. Like, you know, when we were, you know, saying everybody put positive comments below for yeah. Jeffrey. All right. And you have to mean it and genuinely send that loving, that love, that healing energy, that light. You've just helped somebody or maybe other people that were newly diagnosed with something or people going through something that's different. Yes. That's a kind act. And if you just do one of those little kind acts daily, you don't even have to see the person. Just send healing thought, healing energy, yes. love, light. There yes. you go. It helps it, it raises the vibration. It really does of you yes. and maybe those around you. Yes. And absolutely a positive thought, a prayer, or whatever you want to call it, a prayer, positive thought, thought, sending healing light, whatever words you want to put on it, it is instant. And the more that send it, then the room gets filled with those positive light and people I, I've heard this, uh, from people who have had a near-death experience even, they hear the prayers and the positive thoughts from us on earth. Correct. I believe that. I do. Yeah. We've got some questions. You want to answer some? Yes, let's do. Okay. I've got one from Donna Shepke. Oh, this is kind of, I feel bad for Donna. This almost happened to me driving home from work today, and I'll explain it in a second. Oh, 
Donna says, hello, Mel and Kim. Hi, Donna. I had the most awful thing happen to me on my ride home. I didn't see the mama duck and her babies until it was too late. I am a wreck. I hope I hope she knows that I didn't see her until it was too late. I try I tried to swerve and I clipped and I clipped her. My heart is broken. I could not stop. There was so much traffic behind me. I feel terrible. Oh wow, well, yeah. Well, you know, on my way home, there were there was these geese crossing the road. And this one, it was just going, it came right in front of me. And I put the brakes on. I was able to stop at the car in front of me, almost hit me. And the guy's blowing the horn and he's being a real jerk. And my yeah. first reaction was to give him the middle finger. And I thought, no, I don't care what he does. I don't care. I'm waiting for mama duck to cross. Yes. And the, the other duck cross, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, they yes. were another goose crossed. And then he tried to cut around. But he couldn't because as he did that, the other goose was crossing and he had to wait. And he's trying to pass me, but now he's holding up traffic coming this way. And when the geese crossed, everybody saw what he tried to do. So the traffic coming the opposite way just kept going and he was just kind of stuck there. <laughs> yeah, well. Um, so feel, I, I know you're going to feel bad, but, yeah. you know, um, the mama duck knows you couldn't help it. It wasn't painful and her babies will be okay. Yeah, darn. Yeah, that, that is so sad. Oh my. So we have to send her healing. And this is here we come together, you know, again, sending her healing from us and from the community for this that was totally unintentioned, total accident. And so there is no, you know, I uh, hope she can forgive herself. That's the bigger thing. Right. Forgiving yourself. I mean, the fact that you feel horrible about horrible about it shows you have a moral conscience, a moral compass uh, and a conscience. Some people wouldn't even bother them. So, you know, yeah. Don, I'm sorry that happened, but feeling bad about it shows, as I said, that you're compassionate. And um, <sighs> Mama Duck gets that. But yeah, let's send energy that Donna can yeah. feel herself. To Donna and blessings to the ducks and blessings to Donna. Oh my. Yeah. And I'm sending her blue. I feel the blue light coming into her. I feel too, you know, I guess the blue light's being busy today. <laughs> the blue light's coming in. It has, been, it has been in my world, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a blue healing light, Mel. <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> Oh my goodness. But yes, we send it to her. Oh, the ducks, you know, they're, they're, I feel uh, it was just such an easy transition. There's a lesson in it somehow too, uh, for her. I, and I'm not sure what the lesson is, but it's also this duck may be become, and I'm getting chills on this, may become her spirit animal now. Well, I got cold chills on that. That's true. Absolutely. Yes. I, I, me too. I'm getting the chills on that big time. Like the big mama, biggest mama duck in the sky is like, yep, this is now your spirit animal. Yeah, I got cold chills with that. Wow. Yeah, very beautiful. You know, I've been having a lot of turtles in my neighborhood crossing. I had to put a turtle because there was no way this turtle was going to cross over this whatever. There's a like going nowhere uh, through the traffic, right? So I stopped. <laughs> and there was a truck similar to what you're saying. I stopped. I put the turtle in my car in the back seat and I was on my way to the gym. So I actually had to go home, get a box for the turtle. And then I went to the gym and then I went and found in the river near my house and dropped the turtle off. But then I saw a turtle again when my trying to help my daughter who just wrecked her car. And I saw another turtle and I went by three times to try to get it. And uh, I got there and it was crushed. Well, you know, yeah. You did, well, you did the best you could do. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you saved one turtle. Um, yeah. You can't go with a bite of in there sooner. What would have happened, you know? You, I know. You, you, you did the best you could do. Yeah. And maybe that's a lesson to all of us. Let's. You know, let's take that lemon, make the lemonade and, and do the best we can do with that lemon. 
Yes, yes. Right, right. Okay. Here's another one. Are you ready? Yeah. This is good. Did my sister Kathy know her organs were failing and that and that I was so sad and helpless last year when she was dying? Did it all start because she stopped taking her meds? Thank you, Patty. <laughs> oh, it's Patty. And is Kathy with a C or a K? K with a C. Kathy. And Patty. So the question is, did her sister know she did, was dying? Did her sister Kathy know her organs were failing and that uh and then Patty was so sad and helpless last year when Kathy was dying. Did it all start because she stopped taking her meds? No. Um, well, I think some of it did, but um, I think she knew to a degree that she didn't feel well and, and that, you know, things were kind of going south, to use the vernacular. Um. Uh, but but when she was actually in the process of dying, then no. <laughs> right, right. That didn't make any difference. Um, no. I feel like in a, it's like her soul knew the plan. Correct. And maybe she stopped taking her meds because she was just, sometimes the meds can have worse effects in the disease. And maybe she was just tired and ready to go. That's what I'm picking up. Yeah, yeah. There's a point. But now she's whole again, and I see her younger, and I see her dancing around, and she's having a good time. <laughs> yeah, it, it's hard. You know, sometimes we don't know what happens first, right? Do we stop eating first, or do we, or do we start dying first? And usually you start dying first, and then you stop eating. I mean, it kind of goes like that. And even with meds, you know, when you decide not to take meds anymore, there, there's a knowing, there's a soul purpose in, in that. Yeah. I agree. I agree with that. And, you know, when people usually stop eating and they, they're not drinking any fluid and they're kind of in and out, but then, you know, hearing is a last to go, but at the end, they're really out of it. And, um, you know, we think they're in discomfort, but they're not. Right. And, and so I think, you know, her stopping her meds is like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Exactly. Uh, I think she stopped the meds. Because she think she thought, well, for what purpose am I taking them? <laughs> That's right. That is right. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Um. Uh, I can't. Gara Scout or girl, whatever, something Scout. Uh, hello, Mel and Kim. We have two senior dogs, Archie and Betty. Uh, we worry about their health. They have some skin growth. So that's common with older dogs. They can get like skin tags, lipomas. Lipomas are like fatty tumors. Sometimes they get some little mast cell tumors that are cancer, but the best thing to do is leave them alone. Um, we are concerned. Also, we know how stoic dogs can be and worry about their teeth. Are they okay? They bring such comfort and love to us. We want to always do the same for them. When dogs stop eating and start hiding then you know they're sick, okay? As far as the dog's teeth are concerned, if these dogs are senior, elderly dogs, the best thing to do is leave their teeth alone. <laughs> right, right. I agree on that. And feed them yeah. like a more soft diet. I mean, um, I mean, I feel they're okay. They're not ready to cross over yet. Yeah, and yeah. I kind of get that too. And I feel like they really want to stay together. Yeah. I also feel... I'm getting the chills on that. And there's some angels watching over them that are trying to keep them together. Um, but, you know, maybe just do whatever you can to make the best days possible, the best quality days possible. Maybe you give them a human grade diet. Maybe you, you know, find little things like that. Um, the special rides in the car or whatever it is, little trips, things that, um, you can always remember, because remember, they're always going to be in your heart. This is where they're going to live, always in your heart. And these memories are going to go on and on and on. And then, of course, they'll be with you always. You know, it's funny. I have my furniture. My townhouse is falling apart because I've had dogs. And, you know, when the dogs, they chewed in a little piece off the coffee table, like, what? And then there's a hole in the wall, Lucky chewed. And, you know, my <laughs> dog chewed a corner of the carpet. You know, all of them did mischief. And when they did, I was like, wow, rah, rah, rah. but now it dawned on me, one of these days you're going to look at that and you're going to have tears of joy because it'll remind you of them. And you'll sit back and laugh like, whoa. 
And now every time I look at the little piece of the coffee table that it's chewed off or the little hole in the wall or the side of the carpet or whatever, I could get it fixed. I don't want to. Because when I look at that, it brings back a fond memory of my dogs. Yes, yes, yes. Right. I know exactly what you're talking about. So this I've got of, lots of shoes on everything. <laughs> lots of things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> found a pair of shoes the other day. I thought, what is all oh, gizmo chewed them? Yeah, I, I say <laughs> those shoes and I don't know. So that's kind of like making lemon and making lemonade, right? <laughs> right. That is. Okay. Snoogle. Oh, I like that name, Snoogle. Said, hello, Mel and Kim. Will my brother want a closer relationship with me or will it remain status quo? I see it status quo. Do you have a name? Did he have a name for the brother? No. Mm-hmm. And his name again? No, the person's name is Snoogle. <laughs> um, but here Well, again, hi, Snoogle. What you can do, Snoogle, is just surround your brother with bright healing light. Uh, and and wish for your brother the best. And and then live your life and see what happens. On the same token, on the same token, you don't have to be a doorman for anybody either. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was going to say, Snoo- uh, Snoogle's brother is missing out. But if not, if this, if his brother isn't wanting to engage his or her brother isn't wanting to engage, that's their loss. That's right. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Lisa Foster, uh, Fairdale, Kentucky, actually Fairdale as well. Now, you know, here in Chicago, we have townships, but uh, Louisville, you say Louisville, um, they have, they have suburbs, but they're still part of Louisville, but each suburb has a name. But when you write a letter you, or somebody writes you a letter, it will say Louisville, Kentucky. But uh-huh. she's in Fairdale. I'm family in Fairdale. She said, hi, Mel and Kim from Louisville. Uh, do you see my finding Olive, a cat I rescued out of a park last June? Very shy little tabby Manx cat. A loving home soon? Question mark. I feel really good about the home because I love her. No, it says, I'm sorry. It says, a loving home soon. I need to feel really good about the home because I love her, but she has to be separate from my other cats that hate her. She deserves a home and not stuck in this room anymore. Thank you both for your time and energy. So I do see you finding a home for uh, Olive. Yes, I do. Yeah. It's still a little time, though. There is a process here with Olive. Right. It's a learning for everybody. It's unfortunate, isn't it, when you foster like that? And right. it takes longer than you expect. But the thing is also, Olive is going to be extremely happy in the new home. Exactly. Overjoyed. And because it's going to be in a home without other cats. And uh-huh. it's, I think Olive will be kind of timid and hide. But Olive will come out and make friends with her in her new home with her new owners. Now, whenever company comes in, Olive will go hide. But she will bond with uh, with with her new owners. And I see two people in the household, only two people, and she'll bond with them. So, <laughs> Yeah, no, I just feel like there's going to be such a joy because it's like... Again, this is your tea. It's almost like the lemon and the lemonade, right? This is the lemon right now for Olive. Right. And it will become the lemonade. Right. With a new home, no cats, and two people that she'll trust and she'll ultimately come out of hiding and snuggle and things. Yeah. yeah snuggle, yeah. snuggle. <laughs> All right. Um, I am me, says my sweet fur baby Winston, Winnie the Pooh, age about 12, was put to sleep on October 12, 2023. Mm. He had multiple health issues. I'm still heart sick. Does he know how much I love him? Of course he knows. He does know. You made the right choice to put him to. to uh, yeah, there was nothing else that could be done. I feel very strong. Nothing else could be done medically. Um, oh, no, of course. Oh, yes. I mean, right, right there. There's no question about that. It, it's such a, a vibrant feeling of love there and life, love and life. Nothing, nothing um, dead about that, right? Uh, just very, very much alive. It's been um, six months, I think. We're November, December. Yeah. We marked about, about six months. Um, you made the right decision. 
you know, um, sometimes it's better to make the decision to to put them down as opposed to waiting and waiting and waiting specifically if the dog is is uh, very is really uncomfortable. And dogs are really good at hiding pain. Yes. you know because they pant and they you know their ears get in a certain position, they hide, they you know, but they're good at they're good at masking pain. And I think mm -hmm. they made the right choice because it looks like the, the dog was having trouble breathing a little bit and all kinds of stuff and getting out of breath and, um, and you know, a little pain in the chest and all that. So it was, it was time. It was yeah, the dignity of the dog, you know? Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. So Beb, Beba, I can't pronounce some of these says, hi, Mel and Kim. May I please have a message from my father, Christos, who's in heaven since October of 2023. I take a Christos, that's Christos, but in the Greek is Christos. I I see him up there, Greek dancing and then listen to the Greek music. And if he's Greek or not, I don't know. But, you know, I see him just, you know, like. <laughs> oh. uh, and then I see the flaming Saganaki. And when they flame it, they go, opa. And it's really kind of cool. Oh. And, and I see him just traditional dress and a, you know the traditional outfit and he's having a good time <laughs> i think food i feel a lot of food here with him food. like love the food oh my goodness whatever their the food traditions are i just feel that is and i want to say too um giving a flower to his daughter this is a daughter right um uh. I guess. Okay, I, I think it's, I feel like it's Happy Mother's Day. I feel like it's coming up here about the whole family. Oh, I'm getting chills on this, by the way. Oh, yeah, big time. Like, not it's not just her, but also how she honors the mothers. I mean, I feel like there's a whole lineage of moms here coming together. Oh. You're showing me Arni. Arni is the Greek word for, I think, uh, wait, I think it's the Greek word for lamb. <laughs> oh, okay. Um. And so he's showing me an actual lamb. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, he's showing me fish. Um, and then dancing and everybody just kind of opa and having a good <laughs> mandolin or whatever. The I forget it's not is it the mandolin? I forget that there's a Greek word for it. I can't think of it. But uh, oh, okay. I'm not he's sure. He's around. He's absolutely around. <laughs> I feel like he's very funny too, telling jokes. I feel his he, sense of humor is amazing. Yeah. Um, a little on the stubborn side when it was on the earth plane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I can feel that too. <laughs> I'm going, no, no, not so much now. <laughs> I can do the accent. I am Greek, not so much now. I'm having a good time. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. That's how it comes through. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because when we are on the spirit plane, it is a little different. Our soul self is a little different than our human self. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Kathy Reagans. Hi, Kathy. How are you? It says, uh, hello, Auntie Mel and lovely Kim. My question is, do you both see me getting a financial boost in the coming weeks to months? I really want to make repairs on my house and my car. Big angelic blessings to the both of you. Um, Ooh, I do. I do Not too. far. Not far away. Mm -hmm. I see packed boxes. Whenever I see that, it's either a move. In this case, it's not a move. Or remodeling and repairs being done. I don't know what's going on with the roof or gutters, but the inside, some work done to the kitchen. Um, so I see more money coming in. Um and I see the car repairs. I don't know if it's linking oil. It needs some kind of seal or something. So I see that done. Um, so, you know, what I see is doing one little repair in the house and you go, well, that looks great. And then you do another one, at least the whole domino effect. <laughs> Just like <laughs> one time I did my bathroom. I bought one thing for my bathroom when I was with my cousin. We spent almost $800. We came home, we took everything out of the bathroom and I thought we should go get some paint. Oh, we should, you know, like, uh, spackle the wall and make it like that popcorn <laughs> we did the whole bathroom <laughs> so oh my it's gosh. Like a domino effect you know <laughs> and that's nice to yeah <laughs> yeah uh no but it doesn't feel that far to me and i feel like june is a big time for some of this okay good 
Yay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And that's all the questions I have. So. Oh, okay. Uh, and I know you have to run. So how do we wonder? Oh, if they want to get a hold of you, Kim, what do they do? Uh, well, call me anytime, but not late for dinner. No, I'm just. <laughs> now, Kim at mediumkim.com is my email or mediumkim.com, my website. And I will say, I um, always, almost you know, frequently have classes going. I have the healing circle. It's free on Wednesdays. Uh, and we are doing it every Wednesday uh, uh, this, well, April and May. We'll plan to do it every Wednesday. And that's at six, six o'clock. Yeah. So and everybody go to Kim's channel, hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Yay. Um, and give her a call. She's excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And hey, no, we've got Chicago coming up. We have Chicago coming up uh, at uh, the last weekend in September. I think it's the 26th uh, through the I, That's I mean, right. 26th, 27th, and 28th, is it? Yes. Um, yes. And um, it's going to be at Pippin's. If you're interested, you can go on my website, uh, www.meldor, M-E-L-D-O-E-R-R.com. And it has a flyer on there that uh, Psychic Arthur made. He's coming. You're going to be there. Aiden yes. Coming. Um, Priscilla's coming. Kevin Chandler, Kevin Lewis, Linda Grindle. Uh, we've got a bunch of people. I'm excited. But anyway, go on my website. The, the little flyer will be there. For pricing and information, please call my office, 847 five nine zero five four one one yeah seven five nine zero five four one one it might take us two or three days to get back to you but we will um the cost of the seminar does not include hotel or air but it includes hors d'oeuvres the first night we're going to have a meet and greet you're going to do a little talk and meditation you're going to teach kevin chandler will teach i'll teach uh, Linda Grendel will do message circles. Uh, Kevin Lewis will teach. Uh, so then it's going to be um, all day Friday and all day Saturday. We do provide like a continental breakfast. It's bagels, parfait, parfait bar. And then we have a lunch with meat and non-meat options for both days. And then um, uh, one night we'll have a couple people talk. That'll be, you'll be one of the presenters. Um, yeah. And then uh on i think saturday night is it, i don't know saturday or friday uh thursday friday saturday night yeah <laughs> i gotta get my day straight here um at the end of it you know we'll have our closing uh our closing it'll be fun a lot of fun um linda grindle's gonna be signing books so if you have a copy bring it she'll sign it her book is phenomenal i've read it and it's really good it's like sitting talking to her um and I think she'll be bringing books. Deanne will be bringing oils. Uh, and so it's going to be. There's some giveaways too, right? There's a some giveaway. raffles. There's some raffles. Uh, yeah. We'll give away readings and things like that. And so it's going to be pretty packed and it's going to be a lot. You know, there's a lot to learn. Yeah, a lot to do. Right. Lot to, and lots of fun. The main right. thing's the love. The love, that's right. And, you know, a lot of people say, and the reason I want to do Chicago, well, Linda and I have talked about it for a long time, but it's my, well, originally I'm from Louisville, but, you know, Chicago is my hometown. I've lived here for longer than I ever lived in Louisville. But um, also, you know, a lot of people think that if you're in the city, that it's hard to be connected. And so part of this whole idea is you can be uh, in an urban setting and have an urban retreat and and stay connected you know, in a city. And so yes. that's why we're not doing it out in the suburbs somewhere. We're doing it downtown. <laughs> yeah. The spiritual connection. Yeah. Correct. Right. It's oh, I know. It'd be so much fun. Sacred Chicago connections. So it'll be fun to see a lot of you. We're, we're halfway sold out. We've only got room for 50 people. So it's going to be fun. And really awesome. Good. And it's Thank a, you. a great learning experience for, for the people who will attend and for us who are presenting as well. So. Yeah, I oh, know. Be wonderful. Wonderful, Mel. Thank you. So exciting. Right. Anything else you have on the agenda that you're. Well, uh, on my channel, you know, uh, people said they had they were on that 
for some reason, I guess YouTube sometimes unsubscribes people. I don't know right, what. Right, right. But to subscribe, you know, to your channel and mine, if you look below, it'll, it'll there will be a word subscribe, and on mine there will be a little picture of my dog Lucky, and if you if you hold the cursor over that you know, for about a second or two, the subscribe button will come up and you just okay. click that. So, <laughs> okay. Okay. Everybody go to the Kim's channel, subscribe this channel below, hit the subscribe button, thumbs up for all of them. And there you have it. <laughs> Thank you, Mel. Oh, I hope you have a wonderful uh, rest of the well, weekend or whenever I see you again in two weeks. In two weeks. Kim and I yep. get in two weeks. I'll be on your channel in two weeks. That's right. We're, we're going to get into lots of trouble, I'm sure. Oh, good. I like that. <laughs> what else? Well, meanwhile, if life gives you a lemon, make the lemonade. That's right. Make the lemonade. Okay. Right. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you for watching.